Welcome to the Urban Survivor channel and in this video I'm going to be walking you through my smartphone based digital night vision helmet setup rig featuring the Doji S99 smartphone and sharing some videos captured from the device to help you get an idea of what kind of capabilities and downfalls a setup like this has but overall when you consider this rig costs a little over $500 to build I was really impressed by what you can do with it and I think you will be too. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really helps me reach a wider audience and also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. We'll be starting off with a quick walkthrough of the items I used to build this night vision helmet rig. And the core component is considered to be the world's first rugged smartphone with a built-in 64 megapixel night vision camera, which is the Doji S99. And if you want to learn more about this, you can check out my last video, which will be linked to down below. Anyways, it has a really high quality night vision camera with some basic IR light capabilities. And we'll be looking through this device's display to help us see in the dark. You also need an adapter mount for your helmet, an extension arm to hold the smartphone at a distance where your eyes can comfortably focus focus on the screen, a tripod adapter, and some kind of phone tripod adapter mount to hold your phone. I also picked up a tactical helmet battery pouch and a 20,000 milliamp hour anchor power bank, which act as both a counterweight and an additional source of power to keep the camera running longer. I also picked up this arc rail light mount from Life Mounts and a really cheap supplemental IR light, which will help improve the range of the setup. You also need some kind of basic helmet like this one. It doesn't take much to put this setup together and the grand total of the components in this setup are around $535 and the helmet can be assembled in just a few minutes and all the items will be linked to down below for your reference. If you don't mind buying from AliExpress, you can save about $80 on the phone and there's also plenty of cheaper power banks available than this $50 one from Anchor. So you could easily bring the cost down to around $400. And this is in line with the mid range of digital night vision setups, which you can get into for as low as $100 and upwards of $2,600 with the Psyonix Opsin. Here's a quick look at how everything looks assembled and you can adjust the angle of the extension arm as well as the angle of the smartphone mount. So you should be able to find an optimal position for you to view the display. In this shot, you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like to see through the device with the helmet turned on, but the picture is much more clear in real life compared to how it looks here. But it was just a little difficult for me to get a good focus on the screen while holding another camera to record and also walking around in the dark. All right, so we'll start off with the smartphone's built-in IR turned on and we're indoors now. So you can get an idea of what it might look like to use this in close quarters. It does provide enough illumination in an environment like this without any supplemental lighting and the angle is 80 degrees which actually gives you a relatively wide field of view. The lag behind real life and what you actually see through the camera is only a few tenths of a second. So while it's not real time, it is relatively close behind and I'm able to use it to walk around indoors slowly, but it's definitely not something that you're gonna be able to rely on to run around with too quickly. Now we're taking a look in an urban environment at night with some ambient lighting. The building we're looking at is about 60 meters from where I'm standing. And we're also zooming in here with the built-in digital zoom. And the camera does support four times digital zoom. And the image quality is actually pretty good even when it's zoomed in which I was impressed to see unless you keep the device perfectly still you are gonna get a bit of wobble and there's not a whole lot of image stabilization going on here but this effect is always amplified under magnification for these next few shots the IR illuminator will be on and it does provide much greater visibility distance compared to the smartphones built-in IR one thing to keep in mind here is that the IR light I'm using is very inexpensive and underpowered but it does improve the range of the setup from about 15 to 20 meters to the 30 to 40 meter range with the flood beam and up to about 100 meters with the more focused spot beam. There are significantly better IR illuminators out there that can either be mounted to the helmet, handheld, or even mounted to a rifle. And you can also get IR illuminator light and laser combos, which would further increase the capabilities of the setup and could potentially be useful for hunting or some tactical applications. In particular, shooting a slow moving or stationary target from preferably a prone or crouched position up to about 150 meters or so would definitely be possible with the assistance of an IR laser illuminator combo. Uh, another thing to keep in mind about this setup is that it is extremely delicate and the hodgepodge of aftermarket camera mounts and adapters used to attach the phone to the helmet were originally designed for GoPros and are having a bit of a tough time with the weight of the setup and the smartphone is difficult to hold in place and somewhat prone to readjusting on its own and this is going to be exacerbated if the user is running, jumping, or doing some other quick movements and this is definitely not a rig that would respond kindly to being dropped. Another issue that's more software related is there's a timeout on the night vision camera in standby so it has to be left in the recording mode in order to keep the camera and the screen turned on. This is not too big of an inconvenience, but just something to keep in mind. One upside is that the video recording files are pretty small and they won't take up too much room and you do get a decent amount of memory on the phone to begin with. Anyways, despite its shortcomings,
things, smartphone night vision tech has come a long way, and this setup definitely does present some interesting opportunities and use cases for the more casual user. It could be useful for people with large properties who want to do a quick surveillance, or if you're out in the wilderness and you want the discrete aid of IR illumination, and it also does an even better job in environments with ambient lighting. The smartphone also has a lot to offer as a regular smartphone because it's quite affordable, rugged, and has some decent performance specs, so this might also be a good option for those of you who want a new phone and also want to be able to use it for night vision surveillance or a more hands-free setup like this one. Anyways, don't forget to sound off in the comments and let us know what you guys think of this setup down below. And if you want to check out some of my other night vision videos, I'll link to some of my favorites down below. And another comparable setup you guys might want to check out is the NVG10, which comes in slightly cheaper than this setup, but still delivers some great performance. So be sure to check out that video as well. Also for February, I'm giving away the Ammo Torch XT35 tactical flashlight, which you might remember from my tactical 18650 comparison video from a few months ago. And to enter to win, all you need to do is like the Goodnight Gear page on Facebook and just leave a comment on our new arrivals and February giveaway post, which is linked to down below.